Imagine a world where old age is not an exception but the norm, where men and women walk the earth for centuries, witnessing generations, historical events, and climate changes with a vitality that challenges our modern understanding. The Bible offers us accounts of such lives with characters who lived 600, 700, 800, and even more than 900 years. But are these ages literal or symbolic? And what can these accounts teach us about the divine purpose and the conditions of life in the past? Prepare for a fascinating journey that delves into the depths of history, science, and theology. We will explore not only the biblical narratives, but also the hypotheses raised by scholars and the possible scientific connections that might explain this extraordinary longevity. Could our ancestors have a secret hidden in the pages of the Bible that modern science is just beginning to uncover? In the Bible, we find accounts of figures like Methuselah, who lived 969 years, Genesis 5:27. Before the flood, it was common for people to live for centuries. This specific period, recorded in the early chapters of Genesis, presents a scenario where longevity seems to be a natural feature of life. However, after the flood, life expectancy begins to gradually decline. Why were these lives so long? The Bible does not provide a direct explanation, but invites us to explore and reflect on this mystery. Interpretations of biblical longevity vary. Some scholars advocate a literal interpretation, suggesting that pre-flood living conditions, such as a different atmosphere or greater genetic purity, allowed for longer lives. Others propose a symbolic interpretation, where the ages represent dynasties or periods of influence rather than individual lives. This duality of interpretations challenges us to view the Bible with both theological and scientific perspectives, seeking to understand not only what is written, but also why. Let's explore the main hypotheses raised by scholars. Could the years have been counted differently in antiquity? Is it possible that the ages are symbolic, representing something greater than individual longevity? Or did pre-flood living conditions, including a unique atmosphere or purer genetics, truly allow for such long lives? And how did these factors change after the flood, resulting in a gradual decline in life expectancy? The search for answers about biblical longevity is more than a historical curiosity. It is an opportunity to reflect on our own lives and faith. By exploring biblical narratives, scientific hypotheses, and theological interpretations, we can find deeper meaning in ancient stories and better understand the divine purpose for humanity. Stay with us as we unravel this intriguing mystery and reflect on what it might mean for our understanding of the world and our faith. In the biblical narrative, before the flood, we see an era where extreme longevity was common. Genesis 5 presents a genealogy that includes Methuselah, who lived 969 years, and Noah, who lived 950 years, Genesis 9.29. This era of longevity is characterized by a world that, according to some scholars, had different environmental conditions than those we have today. A common theory is that the Earth's atmosphere before the flood was different, possibly with a water vapor layer that created a greenhouse effect protecting the earth from harmful radiation and providing a perfect environment for a long and healthy life. Genesis 2.6 mentions a mist that rose from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground, suggesting a unique hydrological system. This protection would have allowed the first generations of humanity to live for centuries. After the flood, as described in Genesis 7-8, the Bible suggests that the earth underwent significant transformation. The breaking of this vapor layer during the flood could have drastically altered the climate and atmosphere, exposing humans to more solar radiation and a harsher environment. In Genesis 9:36, God also establishes new conditions for life on earth, including changes in the human diet and animal behavior. After the flood, we see a progressive reduction in longevity, Noah still lived 950 years, but his descendants lived significantly shorter lives. Abraham, for example, lived 175 years, Genesis 25, 7. 
and Moses lived 120 years, Deuteronomy 34, 7. Psalm 90, 10, written by Moses, reflects on this reality, saying, The length of our days is 70 years, or 80, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. The longevity of the pre-flood patriarchs may have a profound theological purpose. God allowed these early generations to live long lives to establish and multiply humanity. Adam lived 930 years, and during this time, he could share his experiences and knowledge of God directly with many subsequent generations. This extended lifespan helped preserve oral tradition and divine wisdom at a time when writing was not yet common. Furthermore, the long life of the patriarchs may symbolize God's blessing on the original creation and his intention for humanity before the corruption of sin. The decrease in longevity after the flood may reflect the consequences of sin and the new reality of a fallen world, as mentioned in Genesis 6-3, where God declares, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be a hundred and twenty years. Therefore, the Bible presents the longevity of the patriarchs not just as a historical fact, but also as a theological element that helps us understand the relationship between God and humanity. The pre- and post-flood conditions illustrate the shift in the divine plan and the impact of sin on the world. The Bible describes figures like Adam, who lived 930 years, Genesis 5-5, and Methuselah, who lived 969 years, Genesis 5-27, these numbers may seem extraordinary, but they are not unique in the ancient world. Ancient cultures such as the Sumerians and Babylonians also recorded accounts of people who lived for centuries. A notable example is the Sumerian King List, an ancient document that mentions kings who reigned for thousands of years. Before a great flood, an event that many scholars associate with the biblical flood, some Sumerian kings are described as having reigned for tens of thousands of years. Although these numbers are even more impressive than the biblical ones, they suggest a common tradition among ancient cultures of recording long lives. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest known literary works, also addresses the quest for immortality. Gilgamesh, the hero of the poem, meets Utnapishtim, who survived a flood sent by the gods and was granted immortality. This account presents intriguing parallels with the story of Noah in the Bible, Genesis 6-9, where Noah lives a long life after the flood. While Sumerian and Babylonian accounts tend to be more fantastical, with rains lasting tens of thousands of years, the biblical accounts are more moderate, but still impressive. These comparisons show that the idea of extremely long lives was common in various ancient cultures. Theologically, these comparisons help us see that the Bible is in dialogue with other cultures of its time. The accounts of biblical longevity, while unique in their context and purpose, are part of a larger picture of how ancient people understood life, death, and the divine. In the biblical context, the longevity of the patriarchs serves to illustrate God's blessing and divine intention for humanity before the corruption of sin. In Genesis 6-3, God declares, Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be a hundred and twenty years. This verse marks the beginning of the reduction in human longevity, reflecting the consequences of sin and the changing relationship between God and humanity. Imagine a lush garden where every plant flourishes vigorously. Before the flood, the earth may have been such a prosperous environment, enabling long and healthy lives. An interesting theory involves vitamin C, an essential nutrient for life. In some animals, like parrots, the ability to synthesize vitamin C internally is associated with long life. A parrot can live up to 80 years, partly due to this ability. Humans, however, lost the ability to produce vitamin C over the course of evolution. Science suggests that if our ancestors could synthesize vitamin C like parrots, it might have contributed to significantly longer lives. This concept is somewhat complex, where each strand of scientific evidence intertwines with the biblical narrative, offering a possible explanation for the longevity of the patriarchs. 
Think of the Earth as a delicate balance, where small changes can have significant impacts. The flood, as described in Genesis 78, might have been a cataclysmic event that altered this balance irreversibly. Some scientific theories propose that catastrophic events, such as the flood, could have drastically changed the Earth's climate, affecting the atmosphere and life cycles. Before the flood, the Earth might have been enveloped in a kind of protective mantle, a layer of water vapor that created a greenhouse effect similar to a permanent tropical garden. This ideal environment would have protected life from harmful solar radiation and maintained stable climatic conditions. After the flood, this mantle would have been destroyed, exposing the Earth to a more severe and unstable climate, reducing human longevity. Like a ray of light penetrating the shadows, science can illuminate aspects of biblical accounts helping us better understand these ancient texts. The vitamin C hypothesis and climate changes are like pieces of a puzzle that, when combined, can offer a more complete view of the longevity described in the Bible. Studies on vitamin C synthesis and genetic purity in the early generations of humanity may explain pre-flood longevity. If our ancestors had less degraded genetics and the ability to synthesize essential nutrients, their lives could have been significantly extended. The dramatic change in climate and atmospheric conditions after the flood provides a scientific explanation for the reduction in human longevity. This event could have altered the Earth in a way that directly affected the health and life expectancy of subsequent generations. The Bible is not just a historical record, but a spiritual guide that reveals God's plans and purposes for humanity. The stories of extreme longevity remind us that life is a precious gift granted by God, and that every moment should be valued and lived with purpose. The narratives of longevity invite us to consider the goodness and sovereignty of God. They show us that despite changes and challenges, the divine purpose remains constant. God allowed the patriarchs to live long lives to establish humanity and transmit his knowledge and wisdom through generations. The interaction between scientific theories and biblical accounts shows us that faith and science are not mutually exclusive, but can complement each other. Modern science, with its discoveries about genetics and climate changes, illuminates aspects of biblical accounts providing a deeper and enriched understanding. May these reflections inspire us to seek a life of faith and purpose. May we learn from the wisdom of the scriptures and be open to the wonders of creation revealed by science. Let us live our lives with the certainty that we are part of a greater plan upheld by the grace and goodness of God. And so, may each day be an opportunity to grow in faith, love, and understanding honoring the gift of life that has been granted to us.